Hey everyone, welcome to Dozen of Tech, I'm Daniel, and as you'll probably know, CS 2015 is over. So in case you don't know what CS is, CS is the largest tech show in the world. It's every year in January Las Vegas, and it's the place where all major tech companies announce their upcoming tech for that specific year. Now unfortunately I couldn't attend CS because of my university exams, but I did follow all the tech releases online, and instead of doing a top 5 or top 10 CS tech like everybody else did, I had to look at all the major tech releases and decided to pick 5 which I believe to be the most innovative ones. So here's my top 5 most innovative CS 2015 tech. Enjoy the video. So starting off with number 5, we have the brand new LG G Flex 2. So in case you don't know, the original G Flex was actually one of the most impressive phones of 2014, although it was basically released in late 2013. Yeah. So the original G Flex was both curved and flexible. And besides this, it also had a self-healing back. So if you tried scratching it, it would self-heal in around 2-3 to three minutes. Obviously that only worked in the most optimal thermal conditions, but still, it was one of those phones which you'll always remember. And now we have the LG G Flex 2. So the G Flex 2 is rocking the same flexible, bendable design, but it now comes in a smaller form factor. So 5.5 inches compared to the previous 6 inch model. The curve is also less subtle, and according to LG, the back now heals in just under 10 seconds, so huge improvement over the previous model, which took about 2-3 to three minutes to heal. Of course, I'll be putting that to the test once I get my hands on one. And finally, in terms of the specs, the LG G Flex 2 is finally rocking a 1080p OLED display, the most powerful Android chip you can get, so the Octa-Core Snapdragon 8010 CPU, 3GB of RAM, as well as Android Lollipop, making this the most powerful Android phone on the market right now just on par with Samsung's new Galaxy Note 4. The camera has also been improved, you're essentially getting the same camera that you get with the LG G3, including that really fast laser autofocus. So overall the G Flex 2 is a really impressive smartphone. It's a top of the line 2015 Android flagship, packed with some of the most mind-blowing features, such as a self-healing coating on the back, as well as, yeah, flexible, bendable, curved body. I'll close that. So stay tuned for a full in depth review somewhere around March when this thing will be available worldwide. Now moving on to number 4, we have the Seagate 7. So to celebrate 35 years of being in a hard drive business, Seagate has now launched the most impressive external hard drive yet. It's made entirely out of steel, and the reason why it's called the 7 is because it's only 7 millimeters thin, with the actual hard drive inside being only 5 millimeters thin. That's completely insane, this makes it not just the thinnest hard drive, but also the thinnest portable drive on the planet right now. The main downside would obviously be its speed. So since this is a mechanical drive and not an SSD, its read and write speeds barely top 100 megabytes per second, whereas an SSD can read speeds of even over 1 gigabyte per second in some cases. Now besides this you can only get it in 500 gigabytes bytes and its price point is pretty high, $99. However, in terms of its design, there's definitely no competitor to the Seagate 7. This is another one of those devices which impresses us not with their performance but with their design. Next up we have Sharp's freeform displays. So up until early 2014 displays were either square or rectangular. However, this was not because they wanted them to be square, but because the circuitry inside was attached to the bezel, so they had to make them square in the end. Then came the Moto 360 and the LG G Watch R, which featured one of the first circular displays on the market. With Sharp's new tech, the circuitry spread throughout the entire surface of the display allowing for not only very thin bezels, but also a potentially infinite number of shapes. And since they're essentially bezel-less, they're perfect for not just cars, but also wearable devices. So Sharp demoed this on Cars dashboard displays, and as you can see, you do not longer need a square display for the dashboard. But instead, you can have them in essentially any shape you want. Functionality-wise, it's basically the same as before. The only true difference is that, well, they look nicer. Now, most of you remember the Moto 360 from last year, and if you do remember the Moto 360, you might also remember that really awkward looking black bar on the bottom of its display, which made the Moto 360's display not an actual circle. They should have called it the Moto 240. Get it? So the black bar was needed because that's where the display's driver was located. It was either that or have it integrated in the bezels, which meant extremely thick bezels, so in the end they decided to go with a bezel-less display, but with that black bar on the bottom of it, which by the way also holds the ambilight sensor. 
but with Sharp's new freeform displays we can have the entire circuitry spread throughout the entire surface of the display, which means that the next Moto 360 might finally have that perfect circle bezel-less display. And yes, we could take this even further and have those really cool flexible smartwatches with absolutely no bezels. How cool is that? Now don't expect to see this in your next car anytime soon, but as I mentioned before you will definitely see this in the next generation of wearable devices and you might even see it in some upcoming phones. Now fun fact, there's already a phone on the market which utilizes this technology. And yeah, you might have heard of this phone, it's obviously made by Sharp and it's the Sharp Aquos Crystal but expect a more polished version within the next few months. Since the Aquos Crystal display is indeed bezel-less but still has that huge bottom bit. So expect that to be reduced in size in the second version of Aquos Crystal, that's if they're going to release one, but we will most likely see this, as I mentioned before, in some upcoming wearables so smartwatches, as well as in some 2015 upcoming mid-range phones like the Aquos Crystal was. Next up we have something which we'll find in every single computer and smartphone that's going to be released in about a year or so, and that is the new USB 3.1, also known as the USB Type-C. So I'm actually working on a really in-depth explained video just on this, so thumbs up for that. But to keep it short, the new USB Type-C is finally going to be reversible. Yeah, that's, that's its key selling point. It's the first reversible USB cable. So just like Apple's Lightning connector, you'll be able to plug it in any way you want. Now the second major change is that it's going to be smaller, and by small I mean really small. So it's going to be the size of a micro USB port, just a tiny bit thicker than the Lightning port. Now besides this, you can also power up a 5K monitor with this. 5K monitor through USB. How cool is that? As you probably know, this wasn't possible before. Even the HDMI, the 2.01, it cannot drive 5K displays, only 4K displays. And besides this, it also supports up to 100 watts of power, which means that you can essentially charge your laptop or even your monitor through a USB cable. All this with an even greater transfer rate of up to 10 gigabits per second. Now the previous model, USB 3.0, was limited to 5 gigabits per second, so you basically get double the transfer speed. But no, for those of you who are wondering, USB 3.1 is not going to be the fastest port, since that title still belongs to the Thunderbolt 2.0, which can reach speeds of up to 20 gigabits per second. But yeah, once again, full in-depth explain video on this will soon reach your sub boxes. And finally, the most impressive and the most innovative piece of CES tech comes from not a tech company, but from a well-known car manufacturer. The number one most innovative CES 2015 tech is BMW's new autonomous driving technology. So this was introduced with the new BMW i3, and what it does is essentially three things. First, it features 360 degrees collision protection for both parking and driving at speeds under 15 kilometers an hour. And by 360 degrees, I mean that it has anti-collision sensors on the front, on the rear, as well as on the sides. So let's say that you're trying to park this, or you're simply driving slow at speeds under 15 kilometers an hour, and let's say that you're about to hit an obstacle by mistake, well, you don't have to worry because the car will automatically stop. The Verge actually tried crashing one of those, and guess what? They couldn't crash it, they they failed. Yeah, that's, that's how well this thing works. I think the only way to crash one of those is to have something underneath the car, so an obstacle underneath the car, because it has no sensors there. So in the end you can still crash it if you really want to. Now the second really cool thing that this car can do is park itself. Yeah, park itself. And by this I mean that all you have to do is sit in the car and see how the steering wheel turns all by itself. And again, this seems to work extremely well. In BMW's demo, the car managed to find a parking place all by itself, without being involved in any kind of collisions. And finally, the third cool thing you can do with this car is talk to it. So BMW built a smartwatch app, which unfortunately is only available for Samsung Gear S at the moment, but what it does is that it lets you see your car's status, such as the charge, the engine's health, and all that kind of stuff, but it also lets you talk to it and tell the things such as park and also retrieve. And yeah, by saying retrieve, you can essentially summon the car to your location. Obviously this will only work for really short distances, like when you're in a parking area for example, but yeah, the car will literally get to you, like literally. And this honestly blew my mind. So imagine you're just getting out of your local supermarket with 10 shopping bags, you don't remember where you parked your car, but no worries, if you have a Samsung Gear S smartwatch, 
simply say retrieve car or press a button on your smartwatch and a car will simply come and, and get you. Now BMW is actually working on a fully automated car, so simply a car which can drive all by itself at speeds of over 15 kilometers per hour. So not just a small i3, they actually plan on bringing this to their larger M4 and i8 models. At the moment they only have a prototype of a fully automated car, which from what I've seen seems to work extremely well. So they demoed this on a racing track and the car was able to reach speeds of up to 90 kilometers an hour. And this was on a racetrack that was actually hosed down with water just to make it slippery. And the car, the car even drifted all by itself. And in case you're wondering, no, no one was driving this car. So they plan on releasing a fully automated car by 2020 with variations and partial automation like the new i3 until then. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about BMW's new autonomous driving as well as the other four tech announcements, tech releases I've talked about. And also let me know in the comment section down below which one was your favorite, which one do you believe was the most innovative one. And speaking of innovative tech, I've done a video on the most innovative piece of technology from the past five years. Actually the most innovative piece of tech since the introduction of smartphones. And yes, I'm talking about Microsoft's new HoloLens. So I've done an explained video on that. So if you haven't seen it, link's in the description box down below as well. And by the way, fun fact, that thing might even replace smartphones at some point in the future if everything goes well. So yeah, this has been it. Top 5 most innovative CS 2015 tech. So thank you all for watching this video. Be sure to hit that like button down there if you have enjoyed this video. I'm Daniel and I'll see you in my next video. So no tech, signing out. Cheers.